The Banshees of Inishirin is the newest film from writer-director Martin McDonough, who's previously made films like Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri and In Bruges. This film also reunites the stars of In Bruges, Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson. The premise of this film is simple. It's just one guy in this duo decides he no longer wants to be friends with the other. He stops talking to him, tells him to go away, and even threatens to cut off his fingers if he ever bothers him again. Just one day he decides, nope. We're not friends anymore, stop talking to me. The simplicity of this story is part of why I love Martin McDonough. He doesn't need a story with a grand scope, major stakes, or anything that's going to be particularly showy. All he needs are characters and dialogue, and he can make a good movie that keeps you engaged. And he does it here again, this film has the best dialogue that I've heard from any movie so far this year. It takes place in 1920s Ireland, so there's some terminology that may go over your head, but it didn't bother me in the slightest. At its core, this movie is just a lot of conversations between people. And movies like that can be labeled as boring or dull, but th this movie is far from that. The script and dialogue keeps you engaged with equal amounts of comedy as well as drama. McDonough is a very comedic writer and knows how to nail down a scene in which characters play it seriously, but the words can't help but make you laugh. But he's also good at making a small story feel big. And in order to do that, you as an audience member need to be bought into the characters in the film, and it's so hard to bring that across in the script. McDonough is excellent in that. He hasn't failed in a movie that he's made so far in accomplishing that task. So, it, I mean, again, I've said it before, but he nailed this script. There's no reason why a story like this should make you feel in a theater that there are high stakes, but it does. But what is an excellent script if not for fantastic performers that can bring the words to life? Uh, all of the actors here are fantastic, especially Colin Farrell. Farrell plays a character who's basically a guy who wants nothing more than to go to the pub every day, spend time with the ones he loves, and have a good time in the process. He's not someone who has huge aspirations or goals throughout life, but he's as this movie would describe it, a nice guy. Farrell is so effective at provoking sadness from this character, but without making him feel depressed. That's important. This guy still has so much hope for the future, even whenever he's been beaten down so many times. Can't help but feel for the guy. Especially how this film moves forward, and you see that it's really not just his best friend that seems to be leaving him in the dust. Poor guy just wanted to hang out with his friend. He doesn't deserve this. Then we have Brendan Gleeson, who's excellent as well. I'd say he doesn't get as much attention as Farrell's character, but when he's on screen, Gleeson does what he does best. He plays a sort of stick in the mud the right way, but can also display glimpses of happiness, joy, whatever you want to call it. Gleeson and Farrell's chemistry on screen, even whenever they're playing characters who don't really mesh together anymore, is excellent. That hasn't changed since In Bruges, and I am so relieved about that. It's been 14 years since we've seen these guys go toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other on screen. Glad that they haven't skipped a beat. McDonough knew what he was doing casting this movie. The other supporting performances are fantastic as well. Carrie Condon plays Farrell's sister in this movie. She's someone who shares a lot of similarities to Gleason's character, but has a different approach on life. And I think there's a whole other movie here where we focus in on her character and how the events of this film affect her. More than anything, I think that Carrie Condon did an excellent job of progressing this character who doesn't feel like the supporting character in her own story. You know what I mean? Like, she is very much the main character of her story, and she is making decisions not to progress her brother and his former friend's story. She is making decisions to progress her life. And it leaves you feeling like you don't get enough time with her because you want to see the gears turning and how she makes certain decisions that she ends up making. Barry Keegan is also very memorable in this movie. I feel like he stole the show anytime he was on screen. I would say he deserves to get nominated for this movie, but there are two reasons why I'm unsure. One is he doesn't get as much time on screen as you would have liked to see. Now, that hasn't been a deterrent for people to get nominated for an Oscar in the past, but still, it could hurt him here, especially with this year being as stacked as it is. And then the second reason is if they're going to promote anybody in this movie for supporting actor, it's going to be Brendan Gleeson. But still, I think he added a lot of great moments to this film, and Keegan showed us why he's an actor to watch. This movie also has a beautiful landscape. I'm a sucker for movies set in Ireland, and McDonough really knows how to shoot this landscape. 
gorgeous backdrop to the events of this film. This movie wasn't perfect for me though because the general problem with a story like this is inherently one of your main characters is unlikable. Yeah, we understand where he's coming from when he gives his reasonings, but still, who wants to root for someone so selfish that they leave their best friend in the dust? And the whole rationale made me like him even less. But that's the question this movie asks and what really matters to us and what we believe our lives will be worth in the future. Gleason's character feels completely different about this than Farrell's. And it forces you as an audience member in this modern age we live in to think about what really matters to you in this life. Are the relationships you have in this life enough for you or do you want strange hundreds of years from now to know your name. And does that even matter in the first place? This movie also feels like it just kind of keeps going at a point whenever there is a clear end in sight. You feel like you're gearing towards an end by a certain point in the movie and judging by the runtime it would make sense for that ending to happen there, but then a character makes a decision that I don't think makes sense at that point in the story. It just didn't seem like something they would do at that point, especially judging by the scene prior. I think it sacrificed an ending for a character that would have made sense the way that the story was progressing. Sorry to be so cryptic, but if you've seen the movie, I think you should understand what exactly I'm talking about here. While this movie's ending didn't feel like it was wrapped up with a bow on the top, I think that was the point, to leave you questioning how you feel about both of these guys and their outlook on life, but I can't deny the fact that it left me leaving the theater with a sort of dreary taste on my tongue. Ultimately, this movie has fantastic performances and one of the best scripts of the year. What I appreciate about it most is McDonough is saying with this movie that even people 100 years ago worried about their legacy and that while times and technology changes, our feelings as humans really don't all that much. Not a perfect movie, but still one that I really enjoyed. I think that it's a testament to the script and the performances that a movie like this can be as engaging as it was. I'm going to give the Banshees of Inishirin an 8. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed it and you want more, and I'll see you next time.